Let's take a look at what information you could learn about your quadratic equation based on parts of the quadratic formula. Here I have the quadratic formula written out to find the roots of any quadratic equation. At the roots, x is negative b or the opposite of b, plus or minus, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all of that over 2a, and that'll tell us where your quadratic will cross the x-axis. We'll know ab about the nature of the roots based on something called the discriminant. And the discriminant is this part that I have in green here. The discriminant will tell us exactly how many roots we have and whether those roots are rational or irrational. Because a quadratic equation has up to two roots, then we can have zero roots, one root, or two roots for any equation. To do that, we'll take a look at just the part that's under the radical. We'll look at just the radicand of the quadratic formula, where it says b squared minus 4ac. That is our discriminant. Let's see what the roots of this equation look like. Okay, so a is 9, b is negative 12, and c is 4. So we've got negative 12 squared minus 4 times a, which is 9, times c, which is 4. So that number squared is 144 minus 36 times 4, which is 144. And the discriminant here is 0. So what does that tell us? Well, we have three basic possibilities for a discriminant. First of all, our number can be a negative number. We can have a negative discriminant. We can have a discriminant that is zero. Or we can have a discriminant that is positive. With positive, we have a couple of choices here. We could have one that is a positive rational number, or one that is a positive irrational number. So with a negative discriminant, what we'll have is underneath the radical, we will have a radicand that is negative. And what do we know about negative numbers under the radical? Something like the square root of negative 2. Well, what we know about that is that that is an imaginary number. So therefore, our roots are imaginary or better yet, let's call them complex. So you'll have two complex roots when your discriminant is negative. Now in this case, our discriminant is zero, which means that whatever number my b is, I don't have to add or subtract anything to it, just divide by 2a. This means that we're going to have exactly one root. Now when we get a positive number for our radicand, you have two possibilities. The first possibility is that your discriminant is a perfect square. When your discriminant is a perfect square, you will have two rational roots when you have a perfect square. If you don't have a perfect square number, as most numbers are not, you're still going to have two roots. These roots will now be irrational. And we'll take a look at all of these examples, but for now let's focus on the one we've got here, which is our f of x is 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. If that's going to be the case, then we need to know that the vertex is on the x-axis. And we can tell that using the other part of the quadratic formula. Here in yellow, I have negative b over 2a. And what this will tell us here is what the value of x at the vertex is. And when we get a value for the x, then we can substitute that into our original equation and we'll be able to find the value of y. So once again, we have our a is 9, our b is negative 12, and our c 
is 4, which is going to be irrelevant because x at the vertex will be negative b over 2a, or in our case, uh, the opposite of negative 12, which is 12, divided by 2 times a, which is 9. So our x will be 12 over 18, let's see, 2 thirds. So we should cross the x-axis at 2 thirds. So to find what y is, and to prove that this is um, this is on the x-axis, I will need to know what the f of 2 thirds is. So let's try it. If I have 9 times the quantity 2 over 3 squared minus 12 times the quantity 2 over 3 and add 4 to that, what will be my y? So what's the f of 2 thirds? Let's see. It'll be 9 times the quantity 4 over 9 minus, uh, let's see, those will cancel to 4, so that'll be minus 8, 4 times 2 is 8, and then plus 4. Alright, so let's see what happens now. Oh, my 9's will cancel here, so I have 4 minus 8 plus 4, or the f of 2 thirds is 0. So the vertex of this equation is at, the vertex is at 2 thirds 0, which means that's the only place that it'll cross the x-axis. Let's take a look at what that, if that's true. Let's look at the vertex of y equals x squared minus 12x plus 4. 0 0.670 or 2 thirds comma 0.